the basic idea is is that yes, he's got all that information. He's asked the question. He's went through the experience. The bottom line is is that he's standing there on the cliff, uh, looking out into the vastness. And the idea is he's just got to take the risk. That's all there is to it. That's what he's being shown. Uh, what uh, Fiston wants to say is that. Uh, is grateful for all the help uh, uh, that uh, the real guides uh, are giving him uh, in the in the furtherance of his uh, musical career, and uh, with uh, the real the real guides on this level, you and uh, and uh, Eva actively supporting him in this uh, in this in this enterprise, and uh, he talks of. Uh, of a musical comp uh, musical competition on the on the real side, in which he was uh, somehow underprivileged or disfavored, and uh, everything was done to uh, <clears throat> uh, to undermine him. Uh, but his his uh, performance was the most uh, uh, exciting and. Uh, Filled with uh, uh, with uh, a lot of people uh, who came to to, uh, to 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 watch him uh, perform, and then uh, in the, the last uh, capital one, where the, uh, a governor of uh, one of his uh, the provinces there in the Congo was to be the judge, you know, of uh, this uh, musical competition. In fact, uh, he was given uh, uh, the instruments that he was given were not were not up to date. Uh, the guitar that he was the guitar that he was given uh, had no strings even. So he was wondering how he was going to to to, to perform uh, uh, that kind of show, um, do a performance with that kind of uh, of instrument. And then while he was eating in a, in a restaurant. Uh, uh, somebody came with uh, uh, brand new guitar strings and uh, which were handed to him and uh, he was able to during the, 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 the competition he had the most brilliant uh, performance of his of his life and uh, he was selected as the best uh, musician and so he wants to thank uh, the Universal Guides for giving him this assistance. And then he says uh, uh, this assistance is very uh, important because uh, uh, they're trying to, to, to support, to, to bring balance to his outer life and uh, consequently to, uh, to the new community because uh, from this, the proceeds from his uh, musical uh, uh, endeavors uh, would help in the uh, even uh, uh, paying for the rents of wh where they uh, where they where they have meetings, and then why not? It could even help to for them to get a piece of land uh, that uh, will be. A new foundation property, and uh, and it's 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 a good thing because uh, uh, the real guides are are helping helping his uh, his career, and uh, this could help him in turn to do uh, much for the uh, for the new community of Congo. So that is his first uh, uh, real side experience. Yes, uh, very simple, and that is that, uh, again, it's a new position. And just like changing the strings in the guitar, uh, we too go through these periods uh, of transition. So uh, all of a sudden he has no strings in the guitar, and that is that's his transition uh, to get the new strings when he's ready because he's deciding. He's the decider. You know, we can ask the guides for this or that, 
but each person decides their life and what they do is uh, then they bring in you might say what's needed because of the decisions made so I see it on the real side he's playing uh, having this experience he's playing etc but really what he's doing is he's presenting uh, the true reality life is is what he's doing and it just uses the music idea so everything that we have in creation uh, when we align ourselves with this reality everything we do then becomes it can become a benefit as we see it so in the personal sense it would it would seem to mean the music well it is a reflection the music is a reflection but the reality of it and the people are interested because people are starving for this after lifetimes of being suppressed and sl enslaved and destroyed uh, they're uh, they're really uh, desperately wanting this and it's really uh, the real connection with the all is is what it is but it's it comes through in the musical sense and so this is where um, <clears throat> many times it's misunderstood where uh, you know if it's food if it's music if it's whatever people uh, think oh gee it's like well I'll be popular and this will mean something well there is a difference between popularity in the reality of what's being presented and I'll just briefly say that just like the concerts my focus is on the children because of what they can see as opposed to just bringing in musicians that are popular you see and then people go to that side of it so again there's many sides to things but it's his experience he can decide whatever so he knows best Fiston's uh, second experience is a uh a little uh, frightful, scary. He had uh, the, uh, a dream, this uh, this nightmarish dream where uh, some evil people came and attacked him. In fact, they attacked him with razor, uh, razor blades and uh, they cut his throat. And so he was afraid that they would cut the uh, the jugular vein, the main vein that if they cut, he he would he would die. So the they actually butchered him in in a very bad way. And then uh, on turning around, he 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 uh, he realized that there was a blade. Uh, uh, there was. Another blade lined somewhere in this, uh, in this, uh, in the, in the, nearby. So he picked it up and, in fact, uh, uh, cut the throat of one of the of the of of, of the people cut to death. And uh, uh, st startled by this by this uh, dream, uh, he got up. And then he, when he, when he, when he got up, he tried to, uh, to change uh, this dream uh, using a technique to change the the elements of the dream, and then, uh, but then this dream manifested on the on the on the physical, uh, by the problems uh, he had, you know, um, his car was. That was after the musical uh, performance where he had got uh, uh, some uh, some decent uh, money coming in. So his car was bashed, destroyed in a, in a horrible way. And uh, he just realized that the proceeds from, from his musical uh, performance would go again to repairing his car instead of maybe using it for some benefit even to the new community the money that he's got will go back again to uh, to solve a problem that uh, was probably uh, uh, unwanted unwarranted so what he wants to know is uh, is there a way that uh, uh, he can be uh, that 
when we have this uh, kind of problem, this kind of attacks on the on the real side, that uh, they can be uh, somehow uh, prevented from manifesting physically. Like, like, uh, like it happened to him with this attack by, by this, uh, uh, let me say, psychic criminals with, with blades. And <laughs> Fistong's uh, uh, dr uh, dream, uh, real side experience, really makes me uh, scared because I had the same, I had a, a kind of dream like that where people came to attack me as they were mo one some way some some held uh, one held a, a short axe the other a cutlass uh, there were about three or four or five of them but what startled me like in the in the in Fiston's experience was the last person who had who held a, a blade my god that it seems I was not afraid of the of the short axe and the other, but upon seeing the the, the, the person holding the blade, it really made me uh, uh, scared, and I and I I jumped, I jumped up. I stopped. I I, I woke up to, to to look at my surroundings, and I and I sang the I sang the the, the new for a short while before falling asleep again. So. It seems this uh, blade, blade attack is something very frightful. I don't know whether it's, it's a pattern with other people because that is what made me very frightened in my dream. Even though they, 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 there were people in front with uh, short axes and cutlasses, that didn't fr frighten me as much as, as the, the blade. Uh, and the blade which was used uh, to cut uh, through uh, Fiston's uh, neck, he was afraid that uh, they would cut the main vein and then he would, he would give up uh, the ghost. So, so what can you say about this brain? How can we prevent these uh, negative experiences from translating into the physical? Even when we try to change them, they still manifest in this kind of disastrous way. Okay, this is fun. Thank you very much for sharing. And, uh, well, first of all, you could buy really good insurance, but uh, just kidding. Also, uh, referring to the car, uh, it's okay to, to drive a, a really bad piece of junk car because then you can take the money and purchase one of our new T-shirts that says Walk with Rebazar. Okay, so I uh, that first came to me when he was sharing the experience, but... Uh, I was just giggling because of that. I was just kidding. So, uh, yeah, we go through these things. I go through it, too. And so uh, his experience where they're trying to cut, in other words, his vocal cords from speaking about the new presentation. And that's what you're dealing with, too. And this is just how it is in creation uh, and prevention. Okay. The best prevention, again, is to take the risk to become more aware and pay attention to what's really going on in this world and not be in la-la land in your mind thinking that this or that. I don't look for protection from the guides. I take the risk, just like a soldier out there. You know, things happen, but the guides are there. The boys are there. But again, uh, you got to figure it out also. So it's always taking the risk. And so, but I see... The value of that, and that is, is that what else has value here? Do you want to be safe all the time? Is that the idea? And uh, is uh, your safety, uh, is it worth more than taking the risk to stand real and eventually be invincible and self-sufficient? Well, we all have to go through the process. And again, just like Chris went through boot camp, he had to go through the process. You know, he had to crawl under machine gun fire. Some of those kids, they raised their heads up and they died. They died in boot camp. There's been many that have and unreported. And when they first go out there into the battle, into the confrontation, we're here to confront 
ourselves because of what we've created. And we've had to create all of this so that we can, again, compare and recognize the is. And if we don't, if we don't do it, if we don't scare ourselves, shock ourselves, etc., then we don't wake up. So it's all part of it. So at what point will we do it? And this is where, again, the masses, for the most part, they hide away, thinking that there's some kind of security here, whether it's in religion or politics or having, uh, you know, guards at your door, whatever. Yeah, of course, you do the precautions. Uh, you know, when it comes to prevention, that's a different, uh, that's different than precautions, isn't it? And so, again, uh, you know, I, I've got a gate-guarded community right next to me. And maybe some people uh, will think, well, this will prevent burglars from coming in. No, it won't. They can come in through helicopter or drones. They can, they can be uh, multidimensional like the uh, shape-shifting reptilians. <laughs> it doesn't prevent anything. Nothing is prevented, you might say. But uh, precautions can be put up. But the idea is, is that, yeah, it's going to take a while. It's going to take your whole life and many lifetimes to where you can stand real with the boys 100%. It ain't going to be in an instant. This is where we've been brought up with these ideas. This is in the consciousness, thinking that, okay, we're good guys now. We're with the new you. Okay, everything should be, you know, I'm protected. I'm all this and that. Hey, it's all about your real awareness. It's all about what you decide every moment, you see? And so it's like this too. Yes. So you've come into the new you. And this is not a criticism, but it's an example. And say that you're popular or whatever. Well, that's within your consciousness too. So, you know, many people want to be popular, but they don't understand what popularity is, uh, etc. So again, that's in the consciousness too. And the unconscious part of ourselves. And so you draw in things. Just like beautiful women out there that are models and whatever, they want to be popular, they want to make a lot of money, they want people to notice them. Well, they do from all angles, and especially in the astral worlds where many of these women are raped and molested and even destroyed. And that's what it comes to. So especially with this young man's experience, a part of it is, is that he's presenting the new you in his own way and demonstrating that. And so, yeah, they want to cut his throat. They don't want him to speak. And so by the very fact that he does the same to the others, you might say in a way that because of what he's presenting at a certain point, it shuts them up too. That's just simply a demonstration. So there's many ways to look at it. But I always look at it from the end result, and that is, is that why are we here? Again, we're here to recognize the is. Even though most of the world does not recognize that, that's their choice. They still make the choices, and it's always a hard choice. Yes, even when you are popular and you make a lot of money and you do all these things that you want to do, uh, it is a hard choice to put in front of you, you might say, what is real and makes sense with the whole of life as opposed to the personal popularity of yourself or what you're doing etc. So, yes, I've seen it before. And again, it's choice. A person can have whatever they want in life. And the end, res end result will be what they've chosen. So I see this as a demonstration, again. Uh, and there's many ways to take it. And yes, you can try and change the situation. But uh, as it becomes shocking to you, wow, you see something different, don't you? And I step into things to shock myself. And the little self is nervous. It's it's perplexed and bewildered. I get that. But I'm going to still keep going. i got to drag it along. And these things happen. So, again, it's not about prevention. How can you prevent life from happening? How can you prevent creation from happening? You can't. Look at all around you outside. Can you prevent uh you know, people don't think about it because they don't see it. Can you prevent the nanotechnology that's affecting all of us? How are you going to prevent that? You going to wear a gas mask all the time or wear aluminum over your head for the microwave so you can't see it all and bump into things? Is that prevention? See, it's not about that. It's about your real awareness and it's about getting through this no matter what it takes. So, again, everything's fine. Yes, thank you for sharing. There's a lot more to that, but uh, he'll figure it out. Mariam says... Uh uh, you know, because of the, 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 the security situation in uh, the Congo, so they want to 
they will call it uh, a day here and uh, 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 because uh, the participants have to go back early uh, go back to their their homes early you know this sort of curfew there and people have to uh, to respect it and uh, uh, protect their their physical lives you know so they want to stop here and Yes, uh, I was going to say too real fast, Miriam. Uh, yes, thank you for showing up. It's always wonderful. And also, you've got the new books. She's got the new books, Charles. Yeah, she got the new books. She got the new books. She even asked me what she was supposed to do with them. I said, well, you just take pictures like, uh, like uh, you know, like mm -hmm. our model, Kelsey, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I just told her to do the same. <laughs> yeah, we're making a new book. Uh, with uh, everybody around the world in it, so those that get the pictures and send it to us, uh, we're Ava and I are making page sizes so that they'll fit into the book. That book should be out probably uh, around the February March. I'm figuring by March, anyhow, first of March, uh, we'll put it all together. It's probably going to be 50 to 100 pages. It's going to be an expensive book, but you're going to be in it. We're making history. Yeah. So it's so cool. That you got it. See how fast they got it, Charles. And we just, uh, you might say, trusted Lulu, and it got there. I, I'm imagining the King's got his, but his was sent to his university, so we haven't heard yet. But at least Marion's. I know that was going to be the hardest one. At least she got hers. So we just uh, trusted the transport. In other words, when you make the decision, that's where the boys come in. And they make it happen. So, yes, thank you very much for sharing everything. And, uh, yeah, it's very important that people hear this. Thank you again, Charles. Keep in mind, it's always Saturday. So here it is. And here we will see you again, young man. Yes, uh, that's time and space for you. So uh, we're everywhere all the time. And, yes, uh, again, I like your questions and what you bring forward. Uh, whatever it is, you can... Uh, see and present. It's wonderful. I do the same thing. Uh, I like the challenge of what you're saying. It's always been that. And uh, I don't decide what I'm going to say. I just see it. That's the best part. And it's for everyone. So we uh, in this world are very unique and very special. And we're providing something wonderful. So it's it's better than any gift or blessing. It's just very real, and it just it is endless. So thank you so much for showing up. Thank you, Marion and, and everyone. Mm -hmm.